American dream is something that everyone is always chasing, even Americans themselves. Um, and everyone's journey to the American dream is different. So uh, I think the important thing is identifying what your version of the American dream is and then taking the proper steps to achieve it. One thing about this country is it has a lot of resources. So the best thing that you can do is identify what your needs are and then pair those with the resources that are available in the country and use them to the best of your abilities until you've stabilized. There's ways you can get assistance in your food expenses. There's ways and you can get assistance in housing and getting affordable housing. Um, and then there's also uh, the ability to get affordable education. So those are the three major things that you can think of in getting them. And then I know that each, each county or each state that you're part of has an um, agency called the Department of Human Services. So what the Department of Human Services does is they have all those resources that you could find that are, uh, can help people who need some social um, help. There's many people in America living below the poverty line. Typically it's different state by state. So what's poverty for, let's say, Maryland is not the same as poverty in California, which has a higher cost of living. So what typically happens when you need assistance is maybe you go to that website, the Department of Human Services, you fill in your form and they'll ask things like what's your income, how big is your household, um, uh, and just what type of help do you need. And then now that gets processed by the Department of Human Services and they come through. So the typical ones, like food stamps, which we used to call, be called food stamps, but now you'll hear them refer to it as um, SNAP or EBT. So you just go fill out those forms and then the government will get back to you whether you've qualified or not. And then you, uh, they sent you like a credit card, which you can use now to purchase food um, for your household as long as you're, uh, you remain below that line. It looks just like a normal credit card. All it says is EBT. And if you look into the supermarkets, they have a sign that says EBT accepted. So you just go and you pay with it. And then that just covers food. So you can buy things like fruits, vegetables, you know, cakes. But then that doesn't cover things uh, like house toiletries and other household appliances. But at least it brings costs down for food. The best thing you can do for yourself when you move is identify the resources. And you do that by talking to people and then also going to that website. So when you go to the website, you can go to a section that says, I don't, it probably will say something along the lines of food help or something like that. You click on that and then that will allow you to, will lead you to the website form. You complete the form and you submit it. And then typically, because food is an urgent need, they'll send that, they review those quickly, or at least they'll give you a temporary card while they're reviewing your, um, they're reviewing your application, and then they'll give you according to the money according to how many are in your household. Yeah, the biggest one outside of food stamps, uh, I would say housing. So the other important thing is, you know, you need somewhere secure and somewhere safe to sleep. So what you can do is look into housing assistance programs. So looking into those, again, you go to that website or for your state and you look into, there's different things that you can do. Housing assistance come in different forms. Sometimes you can qualify for a reduced, uh, what do they call it, reduced housing, reduced price. So let's say, for example, in an apartment complex, they'll reserve uh, let's say the rent there is $2,000 average, but the government has now reserved a certain section of those apartments will now have to go for maybe $1,000 or 1500 So what you now need to do is just um, see if you can qualify for one of those programs, um, and that can help you at least identify more affordable housing. The biggest 
way now, I believe, is Medicare and Medicaid, um, which is essentially an, ins an insurance scheme that is publicly available. But one of them is uh, for elderly people, then one of them is for everyone. So you just go identify which one works for you, then again you submit the application, and that at least gives you some basic uh, government insurance to begin. I was born in Kenya, but then moved here when I was young, so then I've grown up in the system. No one in the States will advocate for you, so you just, like you said, make Google your friend, uh, talk to people, just tell them what your needs are. Americans are t often open, so you just share with them, and most of the time they'll be willing to at least guide you. Uh, you can, if you need, let's say, um, you can find maybe a social work program or somewhere where there's a social worker. When you have a ku go through those steps. Because it is quite confusing even for an American. Could read all those things and find the right website. So no one to to a social work place, no Lisa, no idea. And in the American education system, most things are public education is the, is the status quo. Private is maybe the elite or more people who can afford can go to private. But the quality of public education is uh, typically good, depending on which area you're in. So for us, we moved to a good public education school area. So I went to uh, what they call elementary school here. That's grades one to grade five. And then after that, there's middle school. Middle school is grades six to grade eight. So you move schools to middle school. And then now there's high school, and high school is grade 9 to grade 12, and then you've graduated your, uh, your, edu your high school education. America, uh, education is funded by the property taxes of the area. So typically a school district is the tax, taxable area, to, so counties. So right now we're in Montgomery County. So the school district will be within the Montgomery County area, and that's divided into smaller places. So um, usually way how you go to school is within the distance of your school district. So when you move to an area, they'll say they have a standard distance that you can go because they have buses that can go around and pick the students and take them to school. So within Montgomery County, you go to the nearest school, middle, elementary, and high school within your radius. But you're all still under the same public school system for Montgomery County. Free. Public education from grade 1 to grade 12 is free. You'll find that the costs that you incur are the extracurricular activities. So if you decide that your children will be playing sports, or they will be participating in leadership activities, that's where you'll pay. But then again, going back to the piece of advocacy for yourself, if you're seeing that maybe my child wants to play football but we can't afford the fees that come with the football, you talk to the school. And typically they have a pot of money that they can use to fund or at least sponsor your child to some degree to buy the uniform or whatever is needed for them to participate in the sport. So the bus can come, pick the child, and drop them off. Um, if your child is walking distance to school, they have a crossing guard at the, at the place where they will be cross to, crossing to school. So I guess you can say that's included. Um, and that's essentially, and, and textbooks. So you get textbooks when you get to class, um, and then you return them at the end of the semester. So some school districts, maybe they have laptops they can give the students to take home and bring back, or iPads. Uh, but some maybe they have just a lab in the school, like a computer lab that the students can go walk in and then uh, leave. So it just depends on the on the resources that the school has. The higher education system here is really where you start to pay um, money. So you really need to plan accordingly. Um, with higher education here, when you finish Form 4, there's two, uh, two, I guess you'd call lines that you can go to. There's one which is the um, community college route, and you'll hear people call those two-year institutions. 
that one you can get something like an associate's degree and you get for two years and then you can go work with that. So it's good if you need quick certificates or something like that. And there's the four-year institution where you go and you get your bachelor's degree or you can get your master's later on, your graduate. Um, so as a parent, I think the important thing to look at when your child is about to begin that process is know the school timeline. So typically in the U.S., you apply for a school in the fall, so around September to December is the application season for people who are in Form 4, and then they find out by January, and then they must accept maybe by February, March, and then they start this, they have their summer break from school, they graduate high school, they have their summer break, and then now they start school in the fall of the next year, that's September. So if you're coming in, it's just identifying where you are in the timeline and then seeing how you can fit in. So it might mean that you wait the semester and apply the next semester. Or maybe you've come at a good time where it's an application season, so you put your application in immediately so that it's put in consideration. Community college is actually becoming more of a, a, a viable option. I mean, it's always been a viable option, but it's becoming more of a preferred option even within America because it's the cheaper route. So what you can do is in the U.S., typically in the four years of school, the first two years are always um, prerequisite classes. So what some people choose to do is go complete your prerequisite in the community college and then for cheaper and then now you proceed to the four-year college and finish the other two years there with your concentrated. It depends on where you are in life. For someone who's young and you've just finished school, I advise to follow your interests and your passion, within reason. But uh, really look at what are you interested in and what can you put all your energy in and, and make it so that you can succeed. So that would be the route that I would say. Popular majors that people choose uh, coming from high school to college are Business degree is one big one. People do healthcare, so you'll hear people saying I'm pre-medicine, law, people do uh, law going in, so they'll do pre-law. Um, but then you also have people who do other programs. You can do electronic media and film. You can do, myself, I was uh, international relations. So there's so many opportunities. So you have to spend time researching and seeing what you can match, matches you best and then go forward. And for some people, the option can be even the welding option, which is becoming um, even more, uh, it's becoming more in demand of a field because for so long, so many people left those jobs to go to white collar jobs. So now vocational schools are inviting people to come back and go. And those are good options if you don't think you want to go to university. Look for an employer who can maybe even sponsor you to go through that welding program because they're always looking for um, they're always looking for new talent to, to replace their workforce. Um, other, I think, if it's later in life, the other programs that are more instant, I believe, would be maybe like IT. Um, again, business because it's you know more to navigate. But you you want to choose those ones which have scarcity in the U.S. in terms of. Uh, being able to hire. So healthcare is one, IT, um, those are the two I'm thinking of off the top of my head. So it just depends on where you are in, this, in life. It can be a career and you can make good money. So you'll hear in America this term of white collar jobs, which means you work in the office. You have your white collar. Blue collar jobs are the people who do things like welding, plumbing, things like that. Now, I was saying for a long time there was a push when people were going to these white collar jobs. So now there's not enough people doing welding, plumbing. So with the laws of supply and demand, now those jobs are very in demand and people are really paying well to get those. So just to even get a plumber to come look at your house and quote that they haven't fixed anything, it's going to be expensive just to get them to come look. So those vocational training options are now also a good path to consider. For those who have an American dream, my, my message is to just uh, go for your dreams. Um, 
and just know that it's not going to be easy but as long as you're clear on your dream and you identify your resources and your support I think uh, you can make things possible for yourself permanent semi-permanent residency card that you can receive in the US and there's multiple ways of being able to receive the green card. And one is uh, being able to win, let's say, a lottery that will bring you with the green card. Um, another way, other ways that I've had people receive green card is let's say you're here and you end up getting married to an American, you can go through and apply the green card process. Um, and then also you can be applied through, let's say, work. So there's various ways and there's just uh, uh, if, you, if it's not the lottery, there's just a uh, criteria that you need to meet. So maybe a number of years in the U.S., then they'll do the application process for you, and then now maybe you can obtain the card. The green card is almost as close to citizenship from what I've had. In terms of you have access to these things like, uh, let's say for education, one thing about America is it's uh, Public education is free, in one, from one to uh, grade one to from four, like we said. But university education is expensive, so things like green cards give you access to funding opportunities. They give you access to um, federal student loans and things like that, so that you can have uh, access to those things and be able to move forward. The biggest takeaway that I would tell people again is always just advocate for yourself in, in the US uh, just again use Google to learn as much as you can talk to people and then advocate for yourself so that you can uh, achieve your dreams thank you for watching this edition of eyeing the dream if you love our story kindly like share comment and subscribe to moving pictures Kenya my name is Bonventure and this is moving pictures Kenya inspiring Africa.